So let's talk about another one of our formed elements. We'll talk about our white blood cells or leukocytes. So remember we have of our formed elements we have red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Our white blood cells are the only complete cells that we have in our blood. Uh, they make up just under 1% of our total blood volume and their biggest role is they function in defense. They are really involved in, in immunity and protecting you from foreign organisms. And what makes them so good at their job is that they have the ability to actually get out of the circulatory system. They can leave the capillaries and get out into the tissues. And they can do this through a process called diapedesis. And diapedesis literally means leaping across. So they're able to actually squeeze through the capillary wall and get out into the tissues. Now once they're out in the tissues, they're going to move through the tissue almost like an amoeba. And they're moving towards a foreign organism, bacteria, toxins that bacteria are releasing. And we say that that's called positive chemotaxis. So they're moving towards a chemical. Okay, so I'm going to show you a quick video um, that shows this chemotaxis. It's pretty cool. So this is a type of white blood cell called a neutrophil chasing a bacterium. So you can see that giant neutrophil here. And you can see it's moving like a little amoeba. And these little black dots, those are bacteria. So you can see that it is hunting down the bacteria. We need horror music to go along with this. And it's about to gobble it up. It gobbles it up, brings it inside of itself, and it'll actually degrade that bacteria. Um, now the process of creating more white blood cells is very normal. This is a normal response to an infection and we call that leukocytosis. So this is just the process of oops, creating more white blood cells so that you can fight an infection. Now in reality if you have an infection your white blood cell will double, your count will double very quickly. Um, this is why a lot of times when you go to the doctor um, they may feel your glands up here to see if your glands are swollen. Those are actually your lymph nodes and uh, you house a particular type of white blood cell likes to live in the lymph nodes. It's a white blood cell called a lymphocyte. So speaking of that, let's talk about, there's five different kinds of white blood cells that I'd like to walk you through. Um, and they're listed right here. There's neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, lymphocytes, and monocytes. So those are our five. So you can see those here and here. Um, they are found in the blood in the order here in decreasing abundance in the blood. So this is basically from the most abundant all the way down here to the least abundant. Now you might be looking at that saying going, never let monkeys eat bananas. Those aren't the names of the cells, and they're not. Um, the first letter of each of those represents the first letter of that particular cell type. So never let monkeys eat bananas stands for neutrophil, lymphocyte, monocyte, eosinophil, and basophil. And that is the order from most abundant to least abundant in your blood. Um, now for all of those five different types of white blood cells we actually classify them as a granulocyte or a granulocyte. So granulocytes, I always remember site means cell, granulo is granules, so granulocytes have granules. A granulocytes, anytime you add that qualifier A it means no or not. They do not have any granules. So when you look at these cells under a microscope, and I'll show you these in a, in a few minutes, granulocytes in the cytoplasm look grainy in appearance. A granulocytes do not look grainy because they don't have any granules. Okay. Now of our five white blood cells, um, the three listed here, neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils, those are granulocytes. So um, these do have little granules in them. And then the agranulocytes are lymphocytes and monocytes. 
So let's walk through these. Here are some pictures of our five different types of white blood cells. We have a neutrophil here, so you can see a neutrophil. We can see an eosinophil, and then we can see a basophil. So those first three are granulocytes. And you can see if you look, um, the first thing I want to point out here is that obviously the, the, the cell, the white blood cell, is the big one in the middle. But you know it's a white blood cell because you can see that big old nucleus in there, that stained dark purple nucleus. And if you look at the cytoplasm, you're going to notice all those little granules in there. So that's a neutrophil. Again, if you look at the cytoplasm in an eosinophil, it looks like little dots. And same thing with a basophil. The dots this time, though, are just black or really, really dark blue. And then the A granulocytes, if we look at the cytoplasm, you can see that it's not grainy. So let's walk through our five different types of white blood cells. We're going to start with our granulocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Now the way I remember those is I just remember never eat bananas. Now I know our saying is never let monkeys eat bananas. That's for the order of abundance in our blood. But I just remember never eat bananas. Those are the granulocytes. Okay, so neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. These are larger and um, obviously our white blood cells are larger than red blood cells and they also do not survive as long as red blood cells. Remember red blood cells live about 120 days. White blood cells do not live that long. Um, for our granulocytes they have a, a, a nucleus that is what's called lobed. So when we look at it, like if I go back to this picture here and you look at this neutrophil, notice that that nucleus, it almost looks like it has three nuclei. It's just one, but it's lobed. Same thing with this eosinophil. It kind of looks like it's more than one nucleus in there. It's just a lobed nucleus. They do have those granules that stain. And they're all phagocytic to some degree. And remember from general biology, the term phagocytic or phagocytosis means that they like to eat things. So remember the video that I just showed was a neutrophil that was chasing down a bacteria and it literally brought the bacteria inside of itself. It ate it. Okay. So let's walk through neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. Let's walk through those granulocytes. So we'll start with neutrophils. These are the most numerous of our white blood cells. They are very big. They are twice the size of a red blood cell. And they get their name because the term file means loving. And newt or neutro means neutral. So literally these are neutral loving. So what that means is that when we stain, we put an acid stain, which is red, and a base stain on the blood. And neutrophils take them both up. So if you think about it, an acid stain is red, a base stain is blue, and red and blue make purple. So a lot of times what we'll find with neutrophils is they have sort of this purple or lilac color to them under the microscope. Now a lot of times they are given the term polymorphonuclear leukocytes. I'm not going to use that term. That is a, a mouthful, um, but it really just describes that the nucleus has lobes to it, right? If we think poly means many, morpho is shape, nucleus. So they're white blood cells with a nucleus that has many shapes to it. So this is a great picture of a neutrophil, right? You can tell first off it's big. You know it's a white blood cell because it has that nucleus in it. We know that um, it's a granulocyte because in the cytoplasm we see granules. And we know it's a neutrophil because of that nucleus, that lobed nucleus. Neutrophils are incredibly phagocytic. Again, just think back to that video I showed you a few minutes ago. So a lot of times we call these our bacterial slayers. They will hunt down bacteria in your tissues and gobble them up. They also will go after fungi. And these are the ones where their numbers will really rise during an acute bacterial infection. And they can use a process that's called the respiratory burst. Um, and this is a process that helps them kill off bac bacteria by metabolizing oxygen to produce bleach and hydrogen peroxide. Now I want you to think about this. 
when you clean, if you clean your bathroom, you're cleaning your countertops, bleach is a great cleaner, right? It kills off tons of bacteria. And hydrogen peroxide is typically what you might use maybe if you get an open wound or a scratch, you might put a little hydrogen peroxide on it. You have white blood cells in your body that are capable of producing bleach and hydrogen peroxide to kill off bacteria that get into your body. So that's pretty amazing. Now another type of white blood cell that we have are something called eosinophils. Now these make up about 2-4% to 4 of all of your white blood cells and they get their name, remember that term file, again it means loving. And eosin means acid. So literally eosinophils are acid loving. So remember the acid stain is a red color so a lot of times what we'll find when we see an eosinophil under the microscope are red cytoplasmic granules. Now these also have a bilobed nucleus and a lot of times the red granules in eosinophils act like lysosomes so they're able to release enzymes that can digest particular parasites like parasitic worms. They also can play a really big role in allergies and asthma. We will talk so much more about that as we get into the immune system in chapter 21. So here's an image of an eosinophil. Again, you know you're looking at a white blood cell right here because it has a nucleus. It's a complete cell. And if you look in the cytoplasm, you can see the red granules, how much more red that is. Then let's go back. For example, this neutrophil. See how the neutrophil was more of a light purple? Okay, so eosinophils have those red granules. They are acid loving. And then the last of our granulocytes are called basophils. These are the rarest of our white blood cells. Again, let's think of our that long analogy, never let monkeys eat bananas. That's the very last one. So basophils are very rare. Um, in the typical face-to-face -face lab, I will lay out um, underneath the microscope, I will put on a demonstration and lay out the different types of white blood cells so students can look at them under the microscope. And usually by the time I get to basophils, it'll take me maybe 10 minutes of hunting around on a blood slide to find a basophil. So they are the rarest of our white blood cells. They get their name, again, remember, think file, loving. These are base loving. So remember the base stain is blue and so because they're base loving they take up that blue stain and it results in these really dark blue navy almost black looking granules in the cytoplasm and those granules contain histamine. Now I know you've heard of histamine before because if you've ever taken Benadryl, Benadryl is an antihistamine. So histamine um, is basically um, an inflammatory chemical that acts like a vasodilator, so it causes your vessels to dilate, it causes your vessels to get leaky, it causes you to create more mucus, so this is why you get snotty, um, this is why you might get a little leaky, um, and it can help to attract white blood cells to an area. Now, um, these function very similar to another type of cell called a mast cell, which is involved in the immune system. Again, we'll talk way more about these as we get into chapter 21. But here is an image of a basophil. So again, you can tell this is, looks very different from those surrounding red blood cells, and it's got those really dark granules. And in fact, those granules uh, pick up the stain so much that you almost you can't even really even see the nucleus there. So those are our three granulocytes. Again, just remember, never eat bananas. Neutrophil, basophil, um, and eosinophil. Our A granulocytes, remember this means not, these do not have any granules in them. These are lymphocytes and monocytes. Um, typically the nucleus in these is very round or it's kind of beefy and shaped sort of like a U. So we're going to start with lymphocytes. Uh, lymphocytes are the second most numerous of our white blood cells. Again, remember, never let monkeys eat bananas. Let, never let. They're the second most numerous lymphocytes. Um, they are large and they have a very circular nucleus. So I want you to look down here. 
That is a lymphocyte, and you can see this really round nucleus. It is not lobed. It is really round and takes up most of the space inside of that lymphocyte. In fact, usually you can only see a little sliver of cytoplasm poking out around the edge. We typically find lymphocytes in our lymphoid tissue. So I know I mentioned earlier, you know, when you're sick and your white blood cell count goes up, sometimes your lymph nodes will get swollen. And that's because the number of lymphocytes you're producing has gone up. And lymphocytes live in your lymph nodes. When you think of your immune system, this is the cell you're thinking of. You are thinking of lymphocytes. Now there's actually two kinds of lymphocytes. There are T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes. Um, what, they, what they target, what they go after are two very different things. T lymphocytes, these are going to act against any cell in your body that has been infected by a virus or a bacteria or any body cell that has gone awry and it's maybe turned into cancer. So T lymphocytes attack body cells that aren't quite right. They are sick. They've been infected already with a virus or a bacteria or they've gone awry and they're cancerous. B lymphocytes B lymphocytes are going to attack free foreign organisms floating around in your plasma or in your tissues. And B lymphocytes are going to get rid of those free floating foreign organisms by producing antibodies. Okay, T cells do not make antibodies. Only B cells do that. And the reason is antibodies do a really good job of moving through fluid and latching on to a free-floating foreign organism, something that doesn't belong, and getting rid of it. Okay, So antibodies are very effective at that. Once the foreign organism has moved into your body cell, an antibody doesn't really help. And so that's why we have our T cells. They're going to fight off infected body cells. Now again, this truly, when we think of your immune system, this is what we're thinking of. So we are going to spend a tremendous amount of time talking about these in Chapter 21. He, again, here is a picture of a lymphocyte. So again, you can see that really spherical nucleus here. And you can see that little sliver of cytoplasm poking out. And then the last of our white blood cells um, and uh, the last of our A granulocytes is a type of cell called a monocyte. These are actually huge. These are the largest of our white blood cells. Um, and how I can identify a monocyte is by the shape of its nucleus. It has a U-shaped nucleus. So it's a really big cell with this really big puffy U-shaped nucleus in it. So Monocytes um, are very effective at fighting infections because, again, remember your white blood cells are able to leave circulation and get into your tissues. And monocytes differentiate into what's called a macrophage. So macro means big and phage means eater. So these are big eaters. They are very phagocytic. They will gobble up things that do not belong. So they are great at um, helping to um, get rid of viruses and bacteria, bacterial toxins, any kind of infection that somebody has. And the other thing that monocytes are great at is when they recognize that something doesn't belong and they eat it, they tell on it. <laughs> so they go find, let's go back. They go find your lymphocytes and say, look what I found. This does not belong. And they activate lymphocytes. And remember, lymphocytes are basically your immune system. These are the cells that are really functioning to protect you against foreign organisms. So they kind of work together, um, monocytes and lymphocytes. So here's an image of a monocyte. It is really big. It's the largest of our white blood cells. And you can see that giant, puffy, U-shaped nucleus in the middle. 
So we just went through our five different types of white blood cells. And so um, on this slide, this is a blood slide. Um, we can clearly see kind of in the background back here, we can see all of the plasma that's white in color. And then we can see some formed elements, right? This little thing right here, this is a, a platelet. And then we can see all of these very numerous red blood cells here. And so we can also see though, all of these white blood cells and the white blood cells are huge and they have a nucleus so you know that's what they are so let's go through each of these and see if you can identify them okay so we're going to start here so let's be descriptive about it um, okay so we can tell that it has granules so we know it's a granulocyte and those granules look very red so that means that it picked up that acid stain so these are This would be an eosinophil. Okay, let's look at this one. Um, this one you can tell has picked up a lot of that blue stain to it. It has granules all over it, so we know it's a granulocyte. And the blue stain, this one must be a basophil. Okay, now if we go to this one, again, I see little granules in the cytoplasm back here. Um, and then this one, look at that nucleus. It has multiple lobes in it. And so based on that, I know that this one is a neutrophil. We also know it's a neutrophil because you can see those granules are sort of a lilac color. So it picked up the red and the blue, and that's why we have these purple granules. Let's do this one right here. We see that giant circular nucleus. That is, and, and a little sliver of cytoplasm. We know that that is a lymphocyte. And then lastly, you can kind of tell, I know it's a little bit hard to see. I'll try to use my pointer here. You can see right here, there's a line. So you can tell this is a really puffy U-shaped nucleus. And so this one is a monocyte. Now this one up here, this is a tricky one. Um, I put this one on, um, well, this one was just on the image, but um, it is a tricky one. I know that the nucleus looks like it's in the shape of a U, um, but in reality, this is not a monocyte. Um, it just happens to be that the way that cell is sitting when the slide was prepared, this is a bilobed nucleus. So this one and this one are the same thing. So those are both considered neutrophils. Now I would never ask you one like this on an exam, um, like on a lab exam, I'm not going to put this up and say, what is this one? Um, I'm not going to try to trick you. Um, so I will make it very obvious for which type of cell you're looking at.